In the Antarctic, a team of scientists is digging through the ice to collect rough samples. As the drill came down, the ice beneath their camp began to break, and soon the drill began to sink as well. Jason nearly fell into the hole, but Jack and Frank caught him in time. Then Jack risks jumping over the crack to retrieve the samples, and when he jumps back, the ice breaks under his feet and he falls. Fortunately, he managed to hold onto his axe and his friends brought him back to see how the ice shelves were breaking. Some time later, Jack attends the United Nations Global Warming Conference in New Delhi and tells all world leaders that they will face a new ice age that will freeze everything on Earth. When politicians asked how long it would take, Jack explained that it could take hundreds of years, but if they don't stop using fossil fuels soon, their grandchildren will face the consequences. Unfortunately, politicians pointed out that this would be very costly and call Jack's speech sensationalist claims. In the building, anti-climate change activists and journalists talked about the snowfall, which had never been experienced in the region before and put the city into crisis. After the meeting, Jack met Terry, who worked for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Terry agrees with Jack and they leave together to share their thoughts. A few days later a worker at a monitoring station in Scotland noticed a drop in the temperature of the boy, but his colleagues thought only that the waves were strong, which might have caused it to fall. When Terry came back they didn't tell him about it. It was like a rainy day in Japan, suddenly huge hailstones started falling from the sky, destroying cars and buildings and even killing some people. Reports of Hurricane Noilene in the United States surprised meteorologists. It was the deadliest storm on record and killed hundreds of people. Astronauts aboard the International Space Station were surprised to see a strange and massive storm forming in the natural world. Meanwhile, Jack's son Sam flies to New York with his friend Brian and his crush Laura. Sam is afraid of flying and only gets scared when the plane gets into a huge storm that shakes the plane. Suddenly the pilot announced that they were going to encounter an emergency, so everyone took their seats and held on tight as the shaking got worse and the luggage started falling all over the corridor. Luckily it didn't last long and Sam realized he was holding Laura's hand and had to let go. When they arrived in New York, they were surprised to see a large herd of animals flying westward as if they were running away from something. In fact, animals on farms and zoos behave strangely, as if they are afraid. Sam and his friends go to the competition and do well, but Sam can't help but notice a boy named JD from another school flirting with Laura. Later, while in the monitoring station, Terry finally noticed that the boy was covering the temperature drop in the ocean. The crew told him what they had seen the day before, but they soon realized that most of the boys were sending the same report, meaning it wasn't a malfunction. Terry decides to call Jack and tell him that his thoughts are coming true too quickly, this is something that hasn't happened since the last ice age 10,000 years ago. The only predictive model that reflects this situation is Jack's. When the media reported that Hurricane Noilani was intensifying and the Coast Guard was closing the beaches, a technician in a weather monitoring center in California is getting busy with his girlfriend instead of working. Suddenly he heard a voice and was scared, but he turned out to be the janitor. Just then the phone rang and the technicians received a distress call from a reporter in Los Angeles. The engineer checks the television and notices that a storm is starting to form in Los Angeles and calls his boss to warn him. The man went out and saw that the storm was bigger than normal. Back to Jack, he and his colleagues are watching the news from the helicopter showing how many storms have suddenly appeared around Los Angeles, destroying everything in their path. People panicked and tried to escape, but even large vehicles are blown away and soon buildings start to collapse. The weather station was also hit and could barely survive the damage afterwards. Soon the commander ordered a halt to all air traffic but two planes failed to return in time and crashed in the Midwest. The Global Change Office in Washington, D.C. held an emergency meeting to share news about unusual weather conditions and the global crisis. Thanks to Terry's approval, Jack is able to explain that this is happening because the North Atlantic is now affected by melting ice due to global warming. He also said that things are just getting started and will only get worse. But since climate change is still a theory, Jack's boss gives him 48 hours to find evidence and present it to the government. With the help of Frank, Jason, and NASA meteorologist Janet, Jack began working hard to write a good report of his 24-hour stay. When he finally took a break, his team did some calculations and found that there were only six to eight weeks until a new ice age hit the Earth. The next day, Jack receives a call from Sam, who tells him that he is stranded in New York because constant rain has flooded the city and caused many places to close. After hanging up the phone, he saw that JD was willing to let his team stay at his luxury apartment. In Washington, people are already panicking and raiding the supermarkets. Jack confronts the vice president and tells him that the situation is urgent so they need to begin evacuating, but the vice president ignores him. Meanwhile, snow has been falling rapidly in northern Europe for the last 24 hours and shows no signs of stopping. 
a search and rescue team was sent to save the royal family, but since the helicopter did not have a clear view, it was stuck in the middle of the storm. Soon the helicopter's instruments and blades began to freeze, causing them to fall and crash. Only one pilot survived, but when he peeks outside, he was frozen to death. Terry hears this and sends the secret information to Jack because he has a more powerful computer that can analyze the information. This is how they see hurricanes forming on land where it shouldn't exist. It has been raining in New York for three days, all the trains have stopped and now water is flowing through the sewers. Sea levels in Canada rose 25 feet in seconds, causing dangerous storm surges. There are actually storm warnings too. Sam and his friends saw the news on television before the incident, and JD announced that he wanted to pick up his brother and drop them off, too. When they left the house, they saw that the city was in chaos and the flood was growing. To make matters worse, local zoo staff discovered that the wolf had escaped. Many people flocked to stay at the National Library, even a homeless man was not allowed in because of his dog. While vehicle could not move due to water, many peoples were trapped in their cars. Sam's group also started running to the library, but Laura stayed behind to help the family in the car and hurt her legs. Suddenly, a massive tsunami appears out of nowhere, shattering the Statue of Liberty and slowly engulfing the city, killing thousands. Sam ran back into the street, grabbed Laura, and took her to the library before the waves covered the area. After a while, Jack completed his calculations and called Terry to tell him that the weather was falling rapidly. The storm was growing in Canada, Scotland and Siberia and would soon move to other parts as well. Their prediction of six weeks had been wrong, it only takes 48 hours for a new ice age to begin. People have no choice but to try to save their lives. Meanwhile, Jack learned about what happened in New York and hurried to see his wife, Lucy. In New York, all creatures, including dogs, try to make themselves comfortable in the library. Since nobody has service on their phones, Sam looks for a payphone. He finally found it in the flooded ground and immediately called his family to tell them he was okay. Jack tells him what really happened and tells his son to stay inside because the storm will get worse and everyone outside will freeze to death. The water on the ground is rising every second, the flood reaches the ceiling, ending the call. For a moment, Laura thought Sam had drowned, but luckily he managed to swim out. Laura then finds dry clothes for Sam and hugs him to to share her body heat. After a while, everyone started hearing strange noises, and when they looked outside, they were surprised to see a boat moving on the flooded road, crashing into the cars below. Now Jack decides to go to New York to save his son, despite the danger. His boss knew there was nothing he could do to stop him, but first he asked him to cooperate with the government again because this time they met with the president himself. During the meeting, Jack makes an impressive presentation and suggests that people in the north should go as south as possible, maybe even to Mexico. The vice president once again disagreed with everything Jack said, but this time he was scolded by the president for not having paid attention to this when he should have. To make the plan easier, Jack draws a line on the USA map of all the people that can still be evacuated and explains that sadly it's too late for those far away because anyone entering that area will freeze. After Jack leaves, the vice president tries to, to protest against evacuation again, but the president ignores him and agrees to Jack's plan. At Terry Station, the house's power went out and the group decided to drink because they don't think they'll be rescued. In New York, the library is out of power too. The homeless man notices the flood has frozen and people are using the chance to walk on the ice to head south, so the survivors in the library begin planning to do the same. Sam tries to stop them by telling them what Jack said, but most people ignore him and they leave. There was only a small group of people left, and since the temperature was dropping so quickly, they had no choice but to start burning books to stay warm. They also break the vending machines to get food and use carpets as blankets. Outside the city, people are suffering from the cold and regret having left the library, some of them are starting to die as well. Meanwhile, Mexico closed its borders because it could not accommodate any more American refugees. All the roads were clogged with traffic jams, so people started crossing the river into Mexico as illegal immigrants. A few hours later, traffic finally began to resume as the President of the United States made a deal. He would forgive all Latin American debts in exchange for opening the borders. Back to Jack, he is surprised when he gets help from Frank and Jason to save Sam. Using the science equipment made for Antarctica, they cross the frozen lands in their truck, but eventually the truck hits an obstacle. They now have no choice but to continue walking on snowshoes, staying connected with a rope. They managed to walk for a few hours but they didn't know where they were walking because of the snow and at one point they walked to the top of the building. The window broke and Frank fell in, immediately taking the others with him. Jack managed to break the fall again with his axe, but the glass underneath began to crack as well. First Frank cut the end of the rope to release their bags, but it wasn't enough, so Frank cut the rope too. His friends scream for him as Frank falls to his death. Later, Jack and Jason set up a tent to spend the night. At the White House, the president is also evacuated, but soon the vice president received news that the president was stranded in the storm and didn't make it. 
on the International Space Station, astronauts saw how large clouds covered the Earth and took some photos to send to Janet. When he saw them, he predicted that a Canadian hurricane would hit New York within the hour. In the library, Laura can't sleep, so Sam talks to her and finally confesses his feelings. Laura responded by kissing him. In the morning, the team found Laura unconscious from a fever. Knowing that the wounds of the previous days had poisoned her blood, they researched the symptoms in the medicine book and examined her legs. The notes state that he must take penicillin immediately, otherwise she will lose her leg. So Sam decides to enter the cargo ship to find the medicine. Brian and JD volunteered to help. The trio quickly reached the boat, unaware that their scent is being picked by the wolf which had escaped from the zoo. The infirmary door was closed, so Sam went to the window and carefully climbed the wall. He broke the infirmary window, got in, opened the door for his friend, and Brian found penicillin. Sam wants to go back immediately, but Brian and JD point out that they should get food too. While they were in the kitchen, we saw a wolf that started chasing them from the boat. The wolf manages to bite Jason's leg, so Sam hits it on the head until it lets go of his friend and they close the door behind them. Meanwhile, the eye of the storm has finally filled New York. Sam realizes this and comes up with a plan. He will take the wolf out of the room for his friend to close the door. Sam then goes through the outside wall to use the window again, but accidentally steps on the broken glass, attracting the wolf's attention earlier than planned. He started running quickly and after a few laps he managed to pull them into the hallway and lock the door. The wolves go to the other end of the corridor to try to reach the kitchen, but Brian and JD have already locked that door too and now they're collecting supplies. As the surrounding buildings froze and began to collapse, they put everything and the injured JD into the boat and pulled him out of the ship. Brian and Sam have to pick JD, run to the library, where they enter the warm room right before the rest of the building freezes over. The teams immediately started working to putting the fire stronger. Across the frozen landscape, Jack and Jason continue forward, but eventually Jason collapses from exhaustion and Jack has to drag him through the snow. When he saw the eye of the storm, he immediately started digging in the snow and finds an open vent through which he throws Jason and himself right before this area freezes too. A few hours later, Jason woke up to find the tent and opened fire in several places. As soon as Jack sees him he wants to keep going, not hearing Jason's idea to wait because Jack thinks Sam may not survive for long. As Jack and Jason travel through the storm, they keep encountering frozen corpses everywhere. They only stop at night to sleep in their tents, and Jack says that the humans survived the Ice Age, but they won't survive here if they aren't careful from now on. After a while, the International Space Station noticed that the storm in Europe had disappeared, and they finally saw land again. Now Jack came out of the tent and saw that the sky was clear. The journey was now easier for him and Jason, and they soon arrived in New York to find the Statue of Liberty completely frozen and a group of ships stuck in the ice. When the GPS indicates they're standing on top of the library, Jack was heartbroken to learn that his son would be buried in the snow. Not wanting to give up, the duo manages to find an opening in the snow and enter the library through windows. As they look around, they begin to lose hope but eventually they see a light under the door and open it and see that the group is alive and well, even Laura is feeling better. Soon Sam and Jack were reunited in a warm embrace. Later in Mexico, the vice president has taken over as the new president and after hearing about the survivors in the library, he announced on television that he was wrong and that he would launch a major rescue operation to save people stuck in the northern states. A helicopter arrived in New York soon after and took away the group, including the dog. They also found many survivors in other buildings. Astronauts looked at Earth from the International Space Station and saw that it was the clearest atmosphere they had ever seen. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to watch more videos like this.